All right, so you guys are wanting to learn how to do a latex paint job or a quote-unquote bare paint job to your military truck. Or maybe not even a military truck. Well, it's very simple. I use this Cuck V as the guinea pig, and I'm going to walk you through every method I've tried and what I found work best. So let's dive right in. First up, paint selection. So if you have a Home Depot nearby, they have bare premium plus latex paint. It's paint and primer in one, and then it's an exterior flat paint. This is going to be basically what you'd use for green. You'll take them the paint code. It's like a universal paint code. They can type that into their system and mix it right up to match. If you don't have Home Depot, like I don't, I had to drive two hours to get that. I've got Menards. They've got pick Pittsburgh paint, um, they're ultra paint and primer in one, apples to apples, this is like um, $40 a gallon, this is like $24 a gallon, used both of them on this truck to compare strength, durability, sprayability, and they're really pretty much neck and neck. So don't be too picky, it doesn't have to be bare, a lot of people will tell you it does, but it doesn't. Next thing you'll need from the paint store is this stuff called Floetrol. It's um, an additive to help the paint flow. I've heard people say that it doesn't work with a spray gun, but I've gotten different results than that. I have to add this to be able to spray it out of my gun, otherwise it's too thick. So I'll actually use a little bit of this with a little bit of water. The other thing, they, uh, which you can see the paintbrush on here, it says eliminates brush and roller marks so it's supposed to help that paint level out. It's supposed to thin it out so it can level out and make it look like you sprayed it on instead of brushed it on. It's supposed to get rid of those brush marks. We'll go over that because I tried that. It did not work for that. Another thing you'll want, these cheap little disposable plastic pouring spouts. They wrap around the uh, can so you can pour it out without getting um, paint in your ridge helps you save a tremendous amount of paint. You're going to need these strainers. They usually come in like a four or five pack. You can get uh, medium and fine, coarse. I just get the mediums. What those are going to do is filter out the large chunks that would otherwise plug up your spray gun. You're definitely going to want to have a bunch of these. They will clog up on you and you'll just throw them away. This goes in your uh, paint cup on your HL, HVLP gun and then these measuring cups so my process is I fold this out put it over my cup shake up my paint put my pour spout on add my flow trawl first so I know exactly how much I have then I'll pour my paint in and then I'll add just a splash of water um, like if I was doing a 32 ounce cup I want to have maybe one ounce of water, maybe a half ounce of water. It doesn't take a lot of water, but I found you really do have to have just a little splash of water to get it to flow out of the HVLP gun. So what happens if it doesn't flow, um, then it won't come out of the gun and you'll get big blotchy blobs of paint coming out. Alright, so now we're going to walk around the truck and I'm going to show you how I progress through all the different painting methods and starting here with the tailgate. I hopped on Amazon and bought a cheap electric airless spray gun. It's like 40 bucks from Rexby. And it came out of the gun really nice initially. Uh, the gun was a bear to clean every time if I wanted to switch colors or just put it away. Uh, that part really sucks on it. And it comes out with this really weird texture. So it leaves kind of these large blotches kind of like an extreme orange peel, like a really coarse orange peel. Comes out really nice. It's pretty hard to control your lines with it though when you're doing the Woodlands camo. And I actually ended up coming back, so I, I used the Rexby electric gun for the base coat of green. Just shot the whole thing with green and then came back and brushed on the brown and black. And I thought that would be easier, but you actually waste a ton of green paint. So I would not recommend just base coating in green first. You'll 
you'll use a lot more paint than you need to. So then I came back and I brushed on the brown and the black. Now this was without the flow trawl. So you can, I don't know if it'll come up very well in the video, but standing here in person, you can definitely see a lot of brush marks in this. You get a really distinct line, and that's really not um, how the military did it. They don't, they say there's no, there's no sharp lines in nature, and you should feather it in and blend it in. So, I think it looks really good. Looks nice and sharp, but if you want it to look authentic, then brushing um, is not going to look authentic. Then we move on to our passenger bedside. This was also with the Rexby um, electric spray gun, and I did all of it with the spray gun this time. So you can see how much softer the edges look. You get a fair amount of overspray, like uh, here I did the green. Again, I did the whole thing basically green, and came back and did the black and the brown later. You should be able to see this, this black overspray here. And then a faint amount of brown. So it's not terrible. I, I mean, if you go, I'll go show you a factory bed with a factory cart paint job. This is pretty close. So for 40 bucks, if you can get through the uh, headaches of cleaning the gun, the electric sprayer is not a bad option. And one other thing I'll say is the electric gun seems like it probably wasted the least amount of paint. If you brush it on, you're applying it a lot thicker than you really need to. And the HVLP gun, I forget the efficiency, it's like 60% I think. So you have a ton of overspray just blown out into the wind with the HVLP. Alright, here's just a quick shot of a factory bed, factory cart paint job. You can see they sprayed the green first. Very minimal overspray. They had their paint equipment set up extremely well. So they do the green, and then the brown, and then the black. Nice feathered, light edges, blends in very well, but not hardly any overspray. Then we'll move on to the front fenders, because that's what I did next. So that's when I learned about Floetrol. So then uh, it was winter when I was doing these, and obviously couldn't shoot these outside, and wanted to keep wanted to keep moving on with this project. So went and got some flow trawl and mixed it up to the instructions and tried to brush it on. But as you can clearly see, all of my brush strokes are still in there. And this was the bear paint. So I thought maybe the bear and the Pittsburgh would behave differently with the flow trawl and the brush, but they didn't. So I'm not a fan of the brush at all. It's, it's okay for touch-ups. It blends in really well actually for touch-ups if you got to touch something up if you chip or scratch something but for doing the whole project I would definitely use either the electric spray gun or the HVLP so this is the HVLP I used it's an FLG 5 by Devilbus it's their finish line series I got this from spray guns direct out of the UK they have by far the best prices on these this is an outstanding gun I bought it to use for primer, but I've used it for the latex, and I've also shot single stage with it. And I'll use a 1.8 tip on that. So moving on to the driver's door. This is one I did 100% with the HVLP. So you can see the amount of overspray. You get a fair amount of overspray. It's obviously affected by wind too, if you're doing this indoors versus outdoors. You can control the HVLP a lot better, or I should say, you can adjust it a lot better than the electric gun. You can change your inlet pressure, you can change your fan pattern. The electric gun was very limited on adjustability. So I like the HVLP the best. It gives me the most control. Yeah, I waste a lot of paint, but we're only talking like $24 a gallon, and you're not gonna use a whole gallon probably to do a pickup like this. For the wheels, use the HVLP gun and narrowed that pattern down to just a little like ballpoint pen size and went around the, the rim. Got that 
and then came back out and fanned out my pattern for the middle. And that turned out really well, but I will say the durability of the latex on a wheel where it's getting blasted by rocks is not very high, and I would use Rust-Oleum Flat Black, which does have a lot more sheen to it, but it's way more durable and it sticks a lot better too. Looking at the front here, I base coated the bumper with the HVLP, let that dry for a couple days, and then came back and used Rust-Oleum Flat Black and a spray can to do my stencils. Just a quick tip on prep. So your base coat, your underlying base coat, is going to have a dramatic effect on the durability and the adhesion of the latex. So this hood was primered. It had a bunch of just uh, surface rust like sunburns and I wanted to see what it would do to just latex over that so I sanded the whole hood but I didn't treat the little rust specks. And so you can see there's a bunch of pin size specks starting to pop through the latex. So you cannot latex over rust. It will come through. You have to treat that. But more on that in a minute. This door had a repaint job. It was not a factory paint door. And I don't know what they used, but it did not react well with the latex at all. I ended up having to sand it and prime it, re redo the whole latex on this door. The rest of the truck, um, it was in primer when I got it. It was in like a black rattle can primer. This door though was um, repainted and what ended up happening was I would come outside when it was raining and you'd see bubbles all over the door. And eventually all those bubbles popped and the paint just flaked right off. So back to the, the rust spots and the primer. I got Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. It comes in a narrow cell can, but it also comes in a quart and gallon size. So I bought a gallon of it, and I've been base coating everything with that now. Just treat it like a, a full-on um, epoxy primer and shoot everything with it. It'll cover up your rust without having to put too much effort into treating the rust, and it'll take care of the adhesion issues or the compatibility issues with your base coat and your latex. It's about $40 a gallon, goes on really easy, and it sticks like glue. And one quick comment I forgot is you'll want to thin that with about 5 to 15 percent acetone to get that to flow out and it helps it dry nice and quick. And lastly just a little bit about drying time and durability and washing. So this needs to sit out in the sunlight ideally for 30 days. The less it gets wet the better. They claim that it can get wet four hours after being painted, but this paint takes about 30 days to harden up and achieve full hardness, durability. So what I've seen based off that is this paint job's nine months old. I did one that was about four days old. They were both sitting outside and we got a pretty severe hailstorm and this one sustained zero damage. The other one that was only four days old looked like it had been sandblasted. So when they say it takes 30 days to cure, believe it, it's going to be a lot more reliable after 30 days. I've taken this truck out and scratched it up and washed it. And you've seen through this video, um, you don't see the scratch marks on it. You wash it and they go away. If you can let it bake out in the sun, we've had a summer in the 90s and 100s. so. This is perfect. Just let it sit out there and cook. And my last point, like on the, the hail spots on the other truck, just went out with the paintbrush and dabbed over them and it blends in really well. You can't tell where the spots are that I repaired, which makes this an awesome thing for rock crawling and off-road trucks. If you're scratching it and constantly touching it up, it takes two seconds. You don't have to wear a mask to deal with the paint. Clean up super simple, just soap and water. So I thought I'd show you my other latex paint job since I completed the Cuck V. Here's my five ton. This is what everything was leading up to. And then this one ended up really not coming out nearly as well as I'd hoped. The weather forecast was so far off, it wasn't even funny. So 
weather conditions for the latex they want it to be ideally above 50 degrees below 90 degrees and below 65 percent relative humidity and this summer has been a humid nightmare and with this truck I had a short window one day it was supposed to be the correct humidity and below 90 but then it got into the high 90s in the middle of the paint job and the other thing is it really helps to be able to paint out of the direct sunlight which let's be honest fitting this thing anywhere under a roof is gonna be a challenge so this thing started out awesome the first coat of green laid down beautifully and by the time I got to the end with the black I couldn't touch the panels they were so hot I was in a pretty bad mood so I just laid it down figured if I have to redo it I have to redo it well this has been on here for a month been sitting outside in the rain it's gotten one or two hailstorms on it and as you can see it's held up just fine so I haven't hit it with a power washer yet we'll see how the black holds up I'm really not worried about the green because that was applied in the ideal conditions but the black and probably the later half of the brown was too hot when it was applied so what happens is it dries either immediately when it hits the panel or maybe even before it hits the panel so then it can't chemically bond and adhere to the panel because it dried too quick we'll find out you don't want to power wash this obviously with the high pressure nozzles I'm using the green which is the automotive it's like the lightest um, pressure other than the black which is no pressure if you hit this with like a yellow or a red nozzle it's gonna come right off but it, you wouldn't wash your normal car with a red or yellow nozzle so I don't know why you would think you could do it to latex I haven't had any problems on the cuck with the green nozzle just don't get aggressive with it treat it like a normal car where you wouldn't get aggressive with that either and it holds up just fine and so these wheels on this side were also latex black and this one here is the rust-oleum flat black and now that it's aged for a bit it really doesn't look too bad I also wiped it down with TSP which um, dulls some of that sheen out of it alright so to the last vehicle I did a latex job on I'm extremely happy with how this one came out as far as prep work goes I use a hot seat which is like boiling water coming out of a pressure washer and that's it I'll mix in a little degreaser to get any oily film off but that hot water is really doing most of the work there let it dry then I can paint I don't sand it or anything the cuck V I did sand that whole thing I used a 220 grit and went over the whole thing with the DA I'm sure that helps it stick a lot better but if you're doing a giant truck like this that's probably gonna get pretty tedious so here's a great example of where the latex doesn't hold up very well on old dirty wheels so I'll probably end up reshooting this one with the rust oleum eventually another nice thing about the rust oleum is you can shoot it out of a can only bad thing is you can't add any doling agents to aerosol cans obviously whereas if you spray it out of an HL, HVLP gun you can get some stuff to dull the paint this truck was done 100% with the HVLP and then I even did these IBC totes because they'll get brittle and crack out in the sunlight super quick and simple to spray it HVLP gun come back stencil them done should hold up really well it's pretty fun playing with the stencils this door was completely just sandblasted by hail and you can't even hardly tell it went right back over it the hail spots you can't even see so repairs again are so simple all right guys thanks for watching I hope you learned more than you needed to you should literally have all the knowledge you need to go out there and do your own latex military woodlands camo paint job. So good luck. Get after it. Try it. You're not going to regret it. If you screw up, super easy to fix any mistakes you might make. 
Thanks again. See you in our next video.